This video will attempt to explain the most common data that parents see on a standard MAP test student progress report using the report of a math test as an example. The student progress report has three different areas for data reporting about the student's performance. The bar chart compares a student's score to the median score of all students at the same grade level both locally and nationally. If we look closely at this chart, we can see five different sets of data, and at the bottom you'll see them labeled SP15 through SP19. What this refers to is the season and the year that these tests were taken. So these are five different tests taken in the spring of 2015 all the way through the spring of 2019. The blue bars indicate your student's score on the MAP test. For example, you can see that this student in the spring of 2018 earned a score of 211 on the math test. And in the spring of 2019, this student's score improved to 223. The orange bars indicate the median score for all of the other students at the school who took the test at the same grade level. The yellow bars indicate the national mean score, meaning all of the students across the country at the same grade level who have taken the same test. If we look at this student's test results from the test that was taken in the spring of 2019, we can make the following observations. On one hand, this student's score is noticeably lower than the median score of his grade level peers in the same school. On the other hand, his score is only two points lower than the national average among all students across the country who took the same test at the same grade level. As a side note, we can also see that this student's peers at the school perform noticeably higher than the national average. The growth chart is meant to provide a snapshot of how a student's skills and cognitive abilities have grown over time using each completed MAP test as a benchmark. Each row in the chart represents a completed test. In this example, the top row indicates the student's result from the test completed in the spring of 2019 when the student was in sixth grade. In the RIT column, the three numbers indicate the student's actual test score, as well as a range that estimates how the student would do if he or she took the same test again within the same time frame. So on this test, the student's actual score was 223. And if the student were to take the same test again, the score would likely fall somewhere between 220 and 226. The RIT growth column indicates the difference between the student score on this test and the student score on the previous test. We can see that this student score on the math test improved 12 points between spring 2018 and spring 2019 from 211 to 223. The growth projection chart is a measure of how the student score was predicted to grow based on the student's performance on previous tests. In this case, the student score in spring 2019 was projected to grow by six points, which means this student substantially exceeded his or her expected progress by improving 12 points. The last column of the growth chart compares the student's score to the millions of other scores across the country that have been taken at the same grade level at the same time of the year. 50 represents the middle or average. We might say that this student's score fell slightly below the middle performing better than 43% of the student's peers. Additionally, the three numbers together predict where the student would fall if he or she took the same test again. Generally speaking, any percentile score above 50 may be considered above the national average, and anything below 50 as below the national average. Lastly, the goals performance summary indicates how well the student performed in each of the skill categories or domains of the test. Looking at this student summary, we can see that the student's performance overall 
was between slightly below average and average. Keep in mind that the MAP test, like any other test, is one of many different methods to measure a student's academic progress and competence, and should be considered alongside other forms of assessment, such as STAR tests and classroom performance, to provide the most accurate, big-picture view of a student's academic growth over time.